Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us once again. It is six o'clock, and that means it's time for our English Flash News Edition. As usual, I'm Daniel Cook, your host, bringing you a translated version of today's news. In the news today, there was an assassination attempt yesterday near the Kashar overpass, in which two men that were traveling in a car were fired upon from another vehicle. Emiliano Shulazi and Gilmando Dani were traveling close to the overpass of Kashar when gunshots were fired from another vehicle. Both of the men were injured in the shooting. In addition, another assassination attempt occurred near Luga Kavaya, and a man named Aryanit Stereo was unfortunately killed in the incident. Police officers Paitim Seryani and Roland Meta were injured in the attack. The police officer Roland Meta was arrested by the police department. He is an officer of the Special Operations Unit. The police seized two firearms and a vehicle, as well as seven bullet cases that were 9mm and 7.62mm in caliber. After the attack, the evidence was sent to the Tirana prosecution for investigation. Mr. Shulazi, who is one of the men who was fired upon in the vehicle yesterday, was sent to Tirana Hospital. Today, he attempted to leave the hospital premises, but the police officers kept him from going. The police finally did allow him to go free after he had given his testimony. Ora News has learned that Shulazi claimed that he was returning from Fushkruya to Tirana at the time that he was attacked. The events yesterday evening are being investigated by two different prosecutors. The prosecution is currently verifying the ownership of the vehicle that the two men were driving because it does not belong to either one of them. The Democratic Party MP, Arben Ristani, has denounced the involvement of the police officer in yesterday's events. He said that his involvement was like the Ministry of Interior giving support to the criminal group. He also laid the blame for the incident at the feet of Rama's government. He said, Rama's government provides facilities and human resources for these gangs. Insecurity has increased. The government hides the details and does not inform the citizens. The Democratic Party says that the serious event proves that the Prime Minister and the Interior Minister offer protection and security to the street gangs. Ristani said that the government will be held responsible for the event. The Democratic Party called the prosecution to maintain professionalism on this issue and to offer transparency on the investigation according to the law. After numerous problems with power outages, OSHA -E has decided to declare an emergency situation within its own company. This decision was made after analyzing the, this, uh, the situation in the southeast of Albania, where some municipalities have been without power for extended time periods as a result of the bad weather. They released this official statement to clarify their actions. About 22 working crews, which include 150 employees of six regional directorates, Shkodra, Girokastra, Tirana, Duras, Elbasan, and Fier, are working to stabilize the situation. The emergency staff has been established in Librajd, headed by the Director of Distribution. On the 4th and 5th of January, electricity was restored to 4,508 customers. We have finished identifying all of our paying customers who have been without electricity. The working programs are designed to restore power to their buildings as quickly as we possibly can. The OSHA -E company gave assurance to all of its customers that it will make every effort to restore electricity as soon as possible. Five 20-story buildings are being constructed in the area of the artificial lake in Tirana, and there is some concern that the construction might cause damage to the dam. The politicians had originally stated that there will be no more building around the dam. Prime Minister Adi Rama even announced the suspension of all construction permits for that area. Environmentalists have given the alarm about environmental damage, and they warn about the danger of the dam collapsing. Originally, the Socialist Party accused the municipality of destroying Tirana's green spaces. The municipality replied that this is a private property and the company has received permits to build there. According to the municipality, 
green spaces will not be affected by this project because they will only build on 40% of the property and the rest will be a garden. The civil society has expressed some alarm about the risk that this construction poses to this area. The experts are saying that these buildings may pose a direct threat to the structure of the dam. According to them, the construction that is going on near the lake puts the dam at risk. They say that the entire area is at risk of flooding if the dam should be damaged. The construction permit for this building was given in 2011, and the current Prime Minister's decision does not affect it. The investigation into this issue is continuing, but even though the National Urban Construction Inspectorate has stopped the work, the company continues to do construction during the night. The Construction Inspectorate and Prime Minister Eddie Rama will have to make a decision on this issue. Aura News has sent an email to the construction company asking for information about the risks that the civil society is speaking about. As of yet, we have received no response. Drivers in the north and southeast of Albania have been advised once again to travel with chains on their tires as they traverse some of the icy roads. This announcement was made today by the Albanian Road Authority and the General Directorate of Road Transport Services. They released this report on the road conditions. The Albanian Road Authority requires the understanding of all drivers in order to enforce traffic rules. The situation has changed from that of yesterday. Snowing has resumed in the Kukas region. During the night, there were low temperatures that caused accumulation of frost on the roads. We are currently in the process of spreading salt on these roads. The Librajd Stableva road is open, but there is frost accumulation and the vehicles are using chains on their tires. There is also frost accumulation in Barat and the drivers are recommended to use tire chains. There are no problems on any of the roads in Vlora and Girokostra and the traffic is proceeding normally. However, drivers in Korcha will encounter some icy roads and it is recommended that they use chains on their tires. There is frost accumulation in Domai Drairets and in Bairam Turikam. Drivers must use tire chains on these roads. There have been low temperatures in Shkodra, but traffic is continuing normally without need for tire chains. In Leja, all roads are clean and there is no problem with traffic conditions. The work has ceased on the landslide that happened several weeks ago in the town of Ibet. The landslide put several of the homes of the citizens there in danger. The residents are saying that they continue to live in rental houses while they are paying to maintain their own homes as well. The Ibet residents indicate that no one has been working on removing the landslide for 10 days now and that traffic has resumed on the road. They say that the passage of large trucks on the road is particularly dangerous. The residents appeal for a solution to be found as soon as possible. Meanwhile, dozens of families have left the village that is their home because of the danger of living in the area. No tentative data has been given or date has been given for their return to their homes. The Day of Epiphany is being celebrated by many of the Christian community here in our country. The tradition of this celebration involves throwing a cross into the river waters. In Barat, the cross was thrown into the waters of the Osumi River, and it was caught by Erold Marini, a 30-year-old from Barat. Braving the freezing temperatures and cold water of the Drino River in Girokastra, the 34-year-old Lucan Todri has caught the cross that was thrown by Father Theodore Nicola. In Korcha, they perform this tradition using a fountain rather than a river. The Day of the Blessed Water was also celebrated in Fier, Duris, and Vlora. Many of the believers use the Blessed Water in their homes throughout the year to bring blessings to their household. Some of Albania's cultural institutions are requesting a change in the legislation at the beginning of this new year. The leaders of three of these cultural institutions declare that 2014 was a very successful year and that the income from ticket sales has increased. 
However, they say that all of this revenue goes to the state budget. For this reason, they have asked for a change in legislation. Despite the fact that their budget is very small, the cultural institutions in the country promise that 2015 will hold beautiful surprises for the Albanian citizens, starting with picture exhibitions in the historic departments. Even though 2014 was full of important cultural events, there have been problems in some cases. We refer specifically to the case of the historical museum, in which the visitors were very disappointed because of the electricity cuts during December. That concludes our news for this evening. We thank you very much for joining us. Please be with us again tomorrow at 6 p.m. for more translated news in English. Thanks and good night.